Hey there, it's Tom Corson Knowles, number one best selling author of the Kindle Publishing Bible series and founder of TCK Publishing. In this video, I'm going to share with you how to find a literary agent. Now, uh, in the link below this video, you'll see a blog post that has a complete guide to finding a literary agent, and you'll also find our actual list of literary agents in every major genre. So we've done a ton of research, our team has done a ton of research to find uh, you know, as many literary agents as possible in every major genre that are actually currently looking for submissions from authors like you. So that's information to be really, really helpful for you. And so in this video, I want to share with you uh, kind of some of the background of how the industry works and how to actually go about getting a literary agent. So first, I want to share my story real quick for those of you who don't know. I spent six years trying to find a literary agent, trying to get a traditional book deal, and just completely failed. Like, I could not get anyone to respond to emails, phone calls, submissions, anything. And I eventually, I basically just gave up on trying to find a literary agent, and I self-published my book and did really, really well. Within 12 months, I had my first $12,000 month uh, from self-publishing my books. So... That's my background. I started teaching people what I had learned, and I also started publishing books and actually created a traditional publishing company called TCK Publishing. And so I share the story with you in this video because it's important to know that literary agents are one way to get a book deal and one way to get your book published. And if it doesn't work out for you, like if you spend six years like I did and you just can't find a literary agent, don't worry. It's not the end of your career. There are lots of other options for you. But if you're really hooked on getting a literary agent and you really want to, here's what you need to know. First of all, make sure you only look for literary agents who are interested in your type of book. So let's say you write vampire romance. There's only a certain amount of literary agents who are interested in romance, right? And especially like fantasy romance. And so if you start contacting literary agents who publish nonfiction or who publish science fiction, and they're not interested in your book, they're just going to completely ignore you. So it's going to waste your time and waste their time. So don't do that. So that's why we've broken down our lists of literary agents into every single genre. So we've got romance, mystery, science fiction, thriller, fantasy, nonfiction, memoirs, everything. We've got all the genres broken down. So make sure you only uh, actually send emails and pitches to literary agents who specialize in publishing books in your genre. Okay, it's very important that you do that because otherwise it's going to waste your time and waste their time. Next, you should probably check the sales record of the literary agent. So most literary agents uh, who are successful will have a track record, and you'll actually be able to see their track record on their website. So you'll be able to see the types of books, authors that they represent, and the type of books that they've gotten book deals for. Um, if you are in a hurry, you can skip this step. It's not that important. Um, it's definitely important before you sign a deal, but when you're just sending email pitches, it's not quite as important, but if you do get a response from a literary agent, uh, make sure you're not, you know, getting scammed or something like that. But work with an agent who is either charging you fees or uh, maybe not a scam, but just an agent who's never done a book deal before and is really new and doesn't know what they're doing. Uh, is something that you might want to just consider before actually signing the deal. So make sure to actually check their sales record if you're going to do a deal with a literary agent. Once you've got the list of literary agents, what you want to do is make sure you read their submission guidelines. So every literary agent has their own submission guidelines, and they're all pretty much similar, but there's going to vary from, from agent to agent, okay? So make sure that you check the submission guidelines before you pitch the agent and follow their submission guidelines exactly. So agents will often have very clear instructions on exactly what they want you to do, exactly how to pitch your manuscript, whether to attach the file or not. Uh, to the email, you know, they've got very clear submission guidelines. So read them and follow them exactly. If you do not follow the submission guidelines exactly, they're most likely just going to ignore your email and you're never going to even, they're never even going to read it. Okay. So that's very important. You follow the submission guidelines. Now, the next thing is you need to write a query letter. Okay. You need to learn how to write a query letter. And a query letter is simply the, the letter. <laughs> Nowadays, it's an email that you send to a literary agent um, to tell them to basically pitch your book to them, to pitch yourself and your book. So it's uh, a very simple process to write a query letter. In the guide and the blog post on how to get a literary agent, we have a guide to writing a query letter. You can follow that as well on our blog. Um, but a couple things you need to know about writing a query letter. First of all, they need to be short. Query letters should be as short as possible, right? Mark Twain said, if I had more time, I would write a shorter letter. You need to write very short query letters because if an, if you open, if an alliteration opens an email, and by the way, they get like hundreds or thousands of emails at a time from authors. So generally speaking, a literary agent is going to have a thousand plus emails in their inbox from authors pitching their books. And when they go through those emails, they're looking really, really quick 
for what they for their for for authors who have followed their submission guidelines. And so if they open your email and they just see a giant wall of text, they are going to ignore it because they don't have time to read all those really long letters. So your query letter has to be as short as possible. The main thing you need to include in your query letter is a clear description of your book. So what is the title of your book? What is the exact genre of your book? Don't just say it's a romance. Say, is it a contemporary romance? Is it a historical romance? What type of genre is it as specifically as you can get? What are three comparable titles to your book? So you need to share three comp comp titles or comparable titles for your book that are as similar as possible to your book in your genre. And they should be books that uh, are not necessarily mega, mega bestsellers. So they, they probably shouldn't have sold more than like 10 million copies. So if you say your book is just like Harry Potter, most people will probably ignore you. So you want to find three comparable titles that have done well, but not ridiculously well that make people think you're just crazy. Okay. So it has to be kind of realistic um, to the literary agent so that they can actually believe you. Now, the other thing you need to include in your query letter is a description of a story. And this is often called a log line in Hollywood. And a log line is a one sentence description of your story. And so you wanna make this as concise and tight as humanly possible, okay? So for example, the log line for Breaking Bad, the TV series would be, you know, a, uh, a high school chemistry teacher is diagnosed with cancer and starts cooking meth in order to provide for his family, right? Is it one sentence? It tells you what the story is, who the main character is, what's at stake, what's going on, one sentence. So I uh, highly recommend you search for log lines online. So find the favorite books uh, or movies in your genre and then search for that, that plus log line in Google. So let's say one of your favorite movies is uh, Harry Potter, right? So then go and look for Harry Potter uh, movie one log line. And in Google, you'll often be able to find the log lines for these different movies and stories and books. And that will help you once you start to study a bunch of log lines, see how you can actually, you know, scrunch down your story, uh, the synopsis for your story into one sentence. So the shorter and tighter your log line, the shorter and tighter your query letter, the more likely the literary agent is actually going to read your email and the more likely they're actually going to open up and read your novel or your book. Okay. So it's very, very important that you make your log line and your email pitch as concise as possible. Now, there's a little bit of difference between finding a literary agent if you're doing fiction and nonfiction. So for fiction, you're gonna need your full novel written. I highly recommend you have your full novel written before you pitch literary agents because if someone does get back to you and say, hey, I wanna read the first two chapters or, or first 10 pages or whatever, and they read that and they like it and they want to read the whole book, you need to send that to them. And if you say, well, it's not done yet, Give, let me get back to you in a year when it's finished, uh, you're probably going to lose their interest. So make sure that you have your full novel written before you pitch a literary agent if you're doing fiction. That's what I recommend. Now, if you're doing nonfiction, you're probably going to need a book proposal. So if you're writing a nonfiction book or a memoir, you're going to need a book proposal, which means you don't actually have to have the book written at all. But you do have to write a book proposal. So make sure you figure out how to write a book proposal. Again, in a link below this video, we have a guide on how to write a book proposal that literary agents will love. So make sure you do that before you pitch literary agents. And instead of attaching uh, your, your nonfiction book or memoir book, you need, simply need to attach your book proposal for those literary agents. Now, another thing that's really going to help you get a literary agent and get a book deal is actually having what's called an author platform, a marketing platform. So you need to have an audience of people who are ready to buy your book, who love you, who love your work and love what you do. So if you're brand new and you're just starting out and no one knows who the heck you are, it's going to be really hard to get a literary agent and really hard to get a book deal. And so you need to learn how to start marketing yourself and how to start marketing your books. So uh, there's not enough time in this video to go through how to do that. But in this YouTube channel, on our blog at TCK Publishing, there are literally hundreds of videos and hundreds of blog posts on marketing for authors, and we'll teach you everything you need to know. So start looking for this information, start, start watching more videos, start um, you know, reading the blog posts on our blog on marketing, and start taking action to build your marketing platform. Because if you have no marketing platform and you've not put any effort into marketing yet, your chances of getting a literary agent or getting a book deal are almost zero, okay? So it's very important you start working on this way before you ever get a book deal, okay? So I hope this video has been helpful for you. If you have any questions, please go ahead and just post your comments below. I'm more than happy to answer any questions you have. Like this video, share it with other authors you know who are looking for a literary agent. And again, if there's anything else we can do to help with TCK Publishing, just let us know. I'm wishing you an incredible day. Take care.